Um, so, you are welcome once again to this lecture. Now, in this lecture, we want to start looking at the nth roots of a complex number, like the square root, the cube root, the fourth, the fifth roots of a complex number. So, just as we find the roots of um, a real number, right? For instance, we can find, when you say the square root of x, that means x is, you know, one half is equal to some real number, let's call it a. Then, of course, this implies that, you know, when you square both sides, x will be equal to b squared, right? And then, of course, the cube root of um, x will be x to the one third, and if that is equal to some number a, then this implies that x will be equal to a raised to the power 3, right? And of course, so that of course means that the n root of x will be equal to, if it's equal to some number a, means that x will be equal to a raised to the power of n, where n is a positive uh, integer, okay? So in the same way, by definition, by definition, the nth root, the nth root of a complex number, complex number, let's call it z, right? z is w implies that z is equal to w to the power n, okay? Where n, of course, is uh, in the set of positive integers, okay? So w is the nth root of the complex number z if z is equal to w raised to the power n, right? n is a number, like 3, etc. Um, in case of the cube root, right? Square root would mean n is, n is 2, the fifth root would mean n is 5, so, so that is uh, the definition. Good. So how do we find the nth root of the complex number z? In other words, how do we get w? Okay, so this is how we go about it. So let's, we can let our complex number z be given by, you know, r cosine of theta, that's the modulus, plus i sine of theta, okay? And we can let w be equal to some other complex number. We don't know how it looks, we don't know the modulus, we have to find that. Cosine of phi, that's the argument, we don't know that as well, we need to find that i sine of Five. Okay. So we let W be equal to this, and we try to find what um, what um, rho and what phi are. Right. Once we know rho and phi, then we have our W. Now, from this relation, right from here, this implies that z is equal to. This implies that, um, of course. R into cosine of theta plus I sine of theta has to be equal to W to the power N will be all of this to the power N. So that will be this to the N. And then cos of phi, sine of phi, right? Raised to the power N. See that? And now this implies that R cosine of theta, I sine of theta, is equal to, so now we can apply the Morris theorem, right? This to the power n, or just take n and multiply by the arguments here, okay? n times 5, n times 5. So this is equal to rho to the power n into cosine of n phi plus i sine of n phi, all right? And so we have the equality of complex numbers. We said that two complex numbers are equal to their real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal, which means that r cosine of theta has to be equal to uh, rho to the n times cosine of n phi and then r sine theta has to be equal to the imaginary part. Okay? So you see the equality of complex numbers. We can rewrite this um, relation to get to get that. So this implies that uh, phi to the n cosine of n phi has to be equal to the real part, which is r cosine of theta, you can call it equation one, and then phi to the n sine of n phi 
This has to be calculated by the higher power to this R sine of theta. You can call this equation 2. So, and the n will be known because we want to find, for if we want to find, for instance, the fifth root, then n will be 5. So, n is known. So, we have two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are rho and phi. Once we get them, then we can plug them back into this. And that will give us the, um, the n fruits, right? Once we get the option, we have the n fruits. So, how do we find um, rho and phi? Okay? Now, you can square both equations and add them because we know that sine squared plus cosine uh, squared is equal to 1, then it's easy to um, eliminate that, right? So, equation 1 squared plus equation 2 squared, right, will give us, well, that will be um, um, so this squared will give us 2n, I'm just going to do here, cosine of 5, see that I'm squaring this plus the square of this. Let's do sine squared and phi. This is equal to this squared plus this squared. So, I mean, I'm just going to factorize this up. This is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Okay? This is squared. Alright? This implies that rho to the 2n, which you can factorize out, right? And then into brackets cos squared and phi plus sine squared and phi is equal to r squared. Well, sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so that's fine. Note that this is also equal to 1. Cos squared and phi plus sine squared and phi is also 1. So this guy is also equal to 1. Therefore, rho raised to the power 2 n is equal to r squared. Okay? So let's get rid of this. And then we have we have We have this implies that rho to the to n is equal to r squared. Note that both rho and r are positive quantities. That's the modulus. Alright? So if you take the root on both sides, this implies that rho to the n is equal to r, which implies that this guy is equal to the nth root of r, right? Nth root of r. So so we have found one of the variables rho as is uh, related to r. So we know this. The next thing we need to find is how do we get phi, all right? Once we have phi, then uh, of course then it's, uh, it's kind of straightforward, okay? Now, since rho to the n is r from one, for instance, from equation one, this implies that this guy is r, so r and r cancels out. So this implies that cos and phi is equal to cosine of theta. And also from this, sine and phi is equal to sine theta. Okay? Cos is equal to cos. Note that the argument for cosine has a multiplicity of 2 pi, right? 2 pi n. Right? So the yeah, equal implies that. For both of them, they are equal implying that n phi has to be equal to theta plus multiples of 2 pi. You see that? 2 pi, let's say k, where k is an integer, right? You see that? They have to be equal means that you know, they are related by this. Good. So once we know this, what we need to find is phi. So you just divide it by n, all right? And then you, got, you get phi is equal to theta plus 2 pi k all over n. Of course, the k is, is an integer. So we know phi, and we also know rho, all right? And so we plug them back into our equation for the roots, the n roots of the complex number w. So from Let's get rid of this. Okay. So remember we said that we said that W the nth root is given by rho 
in, black, in brackets cosine of phi plus i sine of phi. Okay? Now we know what rho is, we know how, what phi is, how they are related to z. So we plug them back in. So put uh, this guy back in, which is this, put phi in, which is this, and you have a relation for w. Therefore, w, so that w now, right, depends on k. Okay? Depends on k. So what we do is we write, you know, k down here. This implies this guy here is the nth root of r, and then we have cosine of phi. Phi is what is given over here. That is theta plus 2 pi k all over n, right? Plus i sine of theta plus 2 pi k all over n. Okay. Well, of course, k here takes on integers, right? k is 0, 1, 2, in fact, up to n minus 1. Okay? k goes all the way up to n minus 1 because the n value of k is the same as the value of k equals 0. It goes in cycles. Okay? It's easy to check that. Because of that, you only take k from 0 to n minus 1. So if we want the cube root, for instance, right? So cube 3, cube root, then you take 3 minus 1 will be 2. So it will only go up to 2. So to find a cube root, k will just be, take k is 0, you have one root. When k is 1, you get another root. When k is 2, you get a third root. Those are the cube roots of the complex number. Okay? So this is, this is important. You can actually show that, you know, if k goes beyond n, beyond n minus 1, you come back, right, to this side. So basically, this is the formula for finding the nth roots of a complex number, z. This formula, this, this is. So whatever we're going to do from now onwards will be based on this. Okay, so try to understand this. This is what we use in finding the nth roots of a complex, any complex number. You just have to write it um, in terms of the um, modulus and argument, and then you can use this relation to find it. Okay? So uh, I'm going to leave this, and in the next video, what I'm going to do is use this to do some examples, all right? Maybe one or two examples, and to illustrate how to apply this to find the average of the complex number. So I'll see you in, uh, in the next lecture.